Hey, hey, what's up, nerds? Keon here from Nerd or Die, and despite how awesome my mom thinks I am, like a lot of you guys, I'm out here trying to do my best to create a community around my live streaming and content creation. So, where do I build a community? Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all are viable options, but I personally find the best way to interact with your community is a Discord server. Which is why today, Defrag and I are going to be walking you through the steps to create a Discord server and build up your community using the Discord community features built directly into their app. And before we officially dive into this video, let me remind you that we do this sort of thing all the time, so if you could play Tag You're It, No Tag Backs with the subscribe button and hit the notification bell, we'd really appreciate it. So strap on your knowledge brain cap things, grab a non-sponsored beverage, cause we're about to get into this. Now, the first step to starting a Discord community is obviously installing and setting up your Discord server. Time to create a server, baby. That's... that's really what the script says, huh? I'm not kidding, Defrag wrote this part and this is how he thinks I talk. Thanks bud, appreciate it. <laughs> anyway, click the plus button on the left hand side, name your server, and use an image of your choosing. Usually your face or your logo will be a good place to start as you want people to associate it with your Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, or whatever else you're creating content on. Once created, the first thing you should do is establish some auto-moderation. You don't have to do this, but we recommend it. Going up to the top, clicking the server name and going to the server settings, you can see a tab called Moderation. Click here, and we're going to recommend setting this to medium for now. Not that you'll get flooded with any bot accounts, but this definitely is worth putting in place now, so you can make sure you're not stuck purging bot accounts later. For right now, don't worry about the scan media content filter, because when you're using the server as a community server, it actually requires you to have scan media content from all members turned on anyway. After this, head down to enable community. In here, we want you to click get started and check these boxes. Hit next, and we're going to set up the basics. You should have a rules or guidelines channel, or whatever you want to call it, so people can understand how you operate your Discord community. Some people find these sections a little bit redundant, but we tend to ban those people. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry. The second field is a community updates channel. This basically will be for you and your moderator's eyes only. Discord will send new updates and information on features, patches, fixes, etc. to whichever channel you select here for this. Since it can potentially have sensitive information about your own channel, it's best to trust this with only yourself and your mods, so creating a private channel for this is a good idea. On the third and final page of this setup, you'll have a few more decisions to make. The first is regarding default notifications. Have you ever just been casually sitting at your computer doing whatever it is you do when you're sitting at your computer, not judging, and you hear this sound? You hear it once, twice, over and over and over. So you finally go to the server where all these notifications are coming from and immediately mute the server. Or perhaps you take the more dramatic approach, type bye in the main chat and leave the server. Now, if you're the person running the server, you'd probably like to avoid both these scenarios. So to avoid putting people off, it might be a good idea to set default notifications to mentions only. That way, unless you mention a specific user or role, you won't bother everyone and they can check on the server without the constant... They can check on the server without a constant... Without it constantly notify... All right, I don't need this. You keep doing your little ping thingy. I told you to change the default settings. <sighs> and we're back. Moving down to the second checkbox, we can remove permissions from the at everyone role, such as admin, manage server, basically anything you don't want everyone to have access to. There's nobody on our server at the moment, but probably a good idea to check both of these. Last but not least is the community guidelines from Discord themselves. If you haven't reviewed this, and let's be honest, we know you haven't, it's not very long, and while most servers will naturally comply with these guidelines, you don't want to be the one time a guideline is broken, so be sure to give it a quick look, and then check this box and hit finish. Now with all of that done, you'll be greeted with this lovely page. There's a few things you can do here. 
One of the coolest initial features of setting up a Discord community is having access to the welcome screen pop-up. That's basically a pop-up that welcomes people to your server. But it's not like I had to tell you that. I'm just kind of excited about this because I literally learned about this feature while working on this script. So let's set that up. Clicking the Setup Welcome Screen button will immediately give you an example of what that is. You can highlight a few noteworthy channels on your server that you think newcomers might want to check out here and put in a custom Welcome Here message. We don't have a great deal of channels set up just yet, but even something as simple as having a prompt to introduce yourself in the general channel, or even having an introduce yourself channel is a great start. And here of course is where you can write the little blurb about the Discord server I mentioned before. Once you enable it, you can preview it, and continue to tweak it and make changes until you're happy. Now, while it's useful to have a rules channel so people can refer to the rules at any given time, something that Discord has given community owners access to is a membership screening page. A lot of Discord setup guides will show you how to set up your server with a bot that assigns a role once you've reacted to a post. This of course is a way to screen members before they join the server, making sure they've read the rules or at least glanced at them for two seconds before deciding they're the perfect human beings that would never ever ever break a rule. You know who you are. Anyway, membership screening lets you put all those rules you want to cover on a pop-up page that people will have to read through and accept the terms before joining your server. To set that up, we're gonna click on, you guessed it, delete server, big bold right at the bottom. You obviously wanna click membership screening. Don't alt F4 your server this early on, like that guy. Yeah, buddy, this is what you get for blindly following a tutorial. You're supposed to absorb the information first, then apply. Once again, Discord does a great job of giving you an example of how it would appear for your new members. Let's hit the setup membership screening button and get to it. When you begin to set up the rules, Discord will actually suggest some rules for sticking in your screening page. You can, of course, just add in your own rules like not talking about the color green, the word color can only be spelled the European way with the extra U that serves no purpose to the word, commas are banned, upside down exclamation marks only, you know, the usual stuff. Once you're happy with it, hit save. These other features here are grayed out at the moment, so we'll cover these in the future once Discord makes them available. And finally, one of the most recent additions to Discord communities is threads. Threads allow you to have a sub-discussion within a Discord channel that is compacted into its own little mini-section right under the main section. If, if that's confusing in the way that I described it, it'll make sense in a second. Oh, uh, Defrag, throw up an example of what a thread looks like. Yeah, something like that. This means you can have a long discussion on one subject with whoever wants to join in, and it won't vanish in between other conversations going on in the channel. Let's be honest, how many times have you been discussing the socio-political climate of the United States of the 1960s only to be interrupted by what somebody had for lunch that day? Too many times if you ask me. You can also use threads to give support channel tickets, so a troubleshooting session doesn't need to fill up an entire support channel when others are also asking for help on different issues. You can use threads to run special recurring events like monthly or weekly competitions. It's still one of the newest features, so if you have some interesting ideas for the threads function, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to know your thoughts on this feature. And that's it. Your Discord community is finally set up and you're ready to go. Start sending out those invites and building your community. If you found this video helpful or learned something new, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button and let us know if we're doing a good job. And if you wanna always be kept up to date with our helpful little tutorials, that subscribe button is looking awfully smackable over there, isn't it? Why not go ahead and uh, give it a little love tap? Huh? We won't tell. And finally, if you'd like to join our Discord community, that's right, we have our own Discord community. Hop on into our server where you can surround yourself with like-minded individuals. Once again, we've been Keon and Defrag from Nerd or Die, and we'll catch you nerds in the next one.